The High Court has temporarily suspended budget cuts imposed on the judiciary by the National Treasury. The cuts had caused a shutdown of dozens of courts across the country. This order follows a petition filed by the Law Society of Kenya challenging the budget cut circular from the Treasury to the judiciary, among other arms of government and state departments. KTN's Morimi Mwangi tells us more. To Joseph Olemapelu and 149 others, the big day had arrived. A three-judge bench constituted by Chief Justice David Maraga was to begin hearing their petition against the Lands Ministry over the already emotive Mau evictions. But the root shock was to be this notice from the deputy registrar at the Nakuru Law Courts, announcing that the judiciary was unable to facilitate the judges over budget cuts. A predicament replicated across the country with over 15,000 cases suspended, as dozens of courts shut down over the crippling budget cuts. But the High Court, in a ruling to a petition filed by the Law Society of Kenya, has suspended the judiciary budget cuts pending hearing and determination of a petition in which LSK wants the judiciary barred from implementing a budget cut circular issued by Acting Treasury Cabinet Secretary Ukuri Atani. I'll tell you, for instance, the Land Court here has dates in 2021. You know, la next year there are no dates. So if you lose a date this year, you can be sure that the next date will be in 2022. The diary is that bad because we lack judges. There are tribunals that have to move all over the country under the same administration of the court system that then have halted the activities. You have to travel to Nairobi to access the just justice. Um, an issue like rent where a person from Lamu, uh, where the court goes to see, the, the tribunal goes to see, they have to travel to Nairobi. A person in Migori, a person in Busia has to come to Nairobi. It doesn't make sense. The budget cuts saw the judiciary suspend the service week, during which judges and magistrates ordinarily speed up hearing of select cases to clear backlog. These austerity measures also affecting 60 mobile courts established to reach remote regions of Lamu, Isiolo, Lodwa, Garissa, Moyale and Malindi. The September 28th circular from CS Yatani had sought to reduce the government recurrent expenditure by at least 50% of a revenue shortfall. With these funds being redirected to President Uhuru Kenyatta's now famous Big Four Pillars. But National Assembly Minority Leader John Badi accused Treasury of deviating from a deal with the Budget Committee to shield the judiciary and parliament from the budget cuts in line with the spirit of independence of the three arms of government. I guess these are live pictures from the National Assembly. Insiders, however, say in line with the government's policy on austerity measures, parliament had allegedly promised to recheck their budget to at least get the government a billion shillings with the judiciary reportedly promising to save some 400 million shillings. The solution is this, that common sense has to prevail. I find it ridiculously weird that we have money to fund private jets for foreign trips, but we don't have money to fund uh, courts. When we are in this state of paralysis, we are affecting virtually every sector Mombasa, which has the highest number of appeals, the, the parties here will be forced to incur an additional cost for the advocates and for themselves to have their matters heard in Malindi. And that also means all, all parties moving from Voi, Lunga Lunga will have to have their appeals heard in, in Malindi. The LSK case resumes on the 6th of November. Legal practitioners are, however, already up in arms. Kenani Maraga. Claiming the budget cuts could be a warm-up to further attack on the independence of the judiciary.